MTI's Got Talent, Talent Show 2021. Um, hello everyone, my name is Jen Gettleman and I work with the Wisconsin Deaf Blind Project. On behalf of the Midwest State Deaf Blind Projects, the Helen Keller National Center and the National Center on Deaf Blindness, I would like to welcome each of you. We are so happy you have joined us tonight for an exciting night full of talents. Before I introduce our MC for the evening, I would like to take a minute to review your accessibility options for the show. Um, we do have ASL interpretation available. You should be able to see the ASL interpreter on your screen. Additionally, we do have closed captioning available. To access captions at the bottom of your screen is a CC button. You will want to click on that to view your options and to turn on closed captioning. During the talent show portion of tonight, there will also be video descriptions of each participant and their talent. After we share our video, we will have a time for question and answers. Um, we will invite you to ask questions of each of the participants. Um, we will ask that you will raise your hand on Zoom um, and you can do that by either pressing the hand, the raise a hand button on the bottom of the screen or there is a shortcut um, button which would be the Alt Y on a PC or an Option Y on a Mac. And once we see that you have a question, we will invite you onto the screen so that you can ask your question. Um, if you have any questions about accessibility, please feel free to send me a direct chat message and I'll do my best to help answer your questions. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our MC for the evening, RJ Crace. RJ is a broadcaster and a podcaster for a group of radio stations that are based in Illinois. He currently resides and works from his home just outside of Indianapolis. He's looking forward to spending the evening with all of us in the Transition Institute tonight. Take it away, RJ. All right, Jen, thanks a lot. Thanks for the welcome. And welcome everybody to the world premiere of the 2021 Midwest Transition Institute talent show movie. I know Jen has put in a lot of hard work on this and we will be watching the video that she has edited in just a couple of minutes. Just wanna set the scene for all of you, especially for the benefit of those of you who may not be aware of exactly what we've got going on. We have six students and three mentors who are going through this Transition Institute process throughout, I believe this entire month of July. And they have, actually there may be more than that that are going through this whole process, but six students and three mentors have shot video of themselves doing something that they're good at. In other words, showing off a talent. And those videos have been edited, edited into a movie that we're gonna see here in just a moment. It's about 30 minutes. Once that's done, as Jen mentioned, we will have a question and answer. And when we get to that point, what we'll do is call on each actor individually to come on screen and say a few words and take questions from the audience. Just to give you a little bit of a heads up, I will call on each actor in the order in which they appear in the video to keep it nice and simple. So, as you can tell, we've got lots to do this evening. So let's get right to it. Sit back, relax, enjoy some popcorn, 
and let's watch the movie. Enjoy the video, everybody. Driving a Tractor by Tyler. A man in a red t-shirt, jeans, and sunglasses sits in the driver's seat of a green tractor parked in a barn. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Tyler Uranic. I'm one of the mentors here for uh, Helen Keller National Center. And we were asked to send a video in to you and, and show you some of our talents. As, uh, we're going to be learning some of yours. And my... One of my main hobbies is antique tractors. And right here, I'm sitting on an Oliver 770 diesel. There's a lot of gas uh, tractors uh, of this model, but there's not a lot of diesel ones. I probably have one of the only diesel ones in the county. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I, do this, and, and as you can see, if you can see if you're low vision, I'm sitting on a special seat that my uh, ma or my mom and dad and a few other people have made for me. And so what it does is it allows for somebody, for me to sit here and drive, and somebody to sit on my left-hand side here to tell me that drive straight uh, up, you know, speed up, slow down, whatever. And this is the thing, uh, I go on tractor rides across, uh, you know, Iowa and, uh, in different places, and I like to uh, go ahead and, uh, and have somebody ride, and this is the tractor that I, that I drive on. And so today I'm going to start it up for you, I'm going to drive it out, and, uh, and then I'm going to walk around the tractor so you can hear it idle. Then I'll shut it off here and talk just a little bit more about how I acquired it and uh, something else that's kind of special. So the first thing we do here, I've got my throttle set. That controls how much fuel is pulled into the motor. So I'm going to turn on my key. And then there's a button over here on the dash that I'm going to push in. And that warms up the air so the uh, engine can start. So we're going to warm it up. It's only about, it's about probably 85 degrees out, so you don't have to hold it for very long. Okay, now my mom over here, she's filming this, uh, filming this. I'm going to start it, and she'll be able to tell me where I have to go here. So here we go. Tyler begins driving the tractor out of the barn. His mother's voice calls out from behind the camera to give directions. Tyler steps down from the tractor, and then he walks around the side and front of the idling tractor, running his hand along it as he walks. When he reaches the other side of the tractor, he reaches up to the key to stop the engine. like that and you know the one thing I had one 
And uh, I learned that running something on gasoline is one of the my things. So I bought this one. And it came from a, guy, a gentleman in eastern Iowa. And uh, and uh, it, I take it on a ride. But my favorite ride of the year is the one that I, uh, we drive about 50 miles. And the one that is my favorite is my own ride called Riding the Sight. It's the first Saturday in August. And it's a ride that we, we raise money for eyesight research. Last year we had 42 tractors, that, antique tractors that came out of here. And this is a 1958 model. So it is old, but it's been, uh, it's been mechanically all rebuilt. So it's like a brand new tractor. In fact, it has an hour meter on it. And when I was looking, or when I first got the tractor here, and it came to our house, it had six hours on the restoration. So it was like a brand new tractor when I got it. And uh, and so, like I say, it's fun to drive, and and uh, and like I say, I do a lot of things with it. I've met a lot of nice people, and when they asked me, well, Tyler, why did you buy a tractor when you're visually impaired, hearing impaired? I said, well. Because I don't get to buy a car, so I bought the tractor instead. So that's uh, one of my favorite talents. I'm involved in a lot of things, but this is something I just love to show. So thank you for watching. Color Street Nails by Jess A blonde woman with glasses and a red shirt sits in front of a black background and signs to the camera. Hello. My name is Jess. This is how I sign my name in sign language. For the talent show, I want to show you something that's called Color Street Nails. I'm going to show you one right here. Jess presents a Color Street nail sticker to the camera. It is rainbow striped and oval shaped and has a tab at one end. They are very easy to use, especially for people who are deaf blind or people who have low vision. They're very friendly for those and they're much better than trying to paint your nails, which can be very difficult when you can't see very well. You get paint all over you, you can make a mess, you have to wait for them to dry. This is much easier. I'm going to show you how to put one on. Jess begins to peel apart the Color Street nail sticker, removing a clear film from one side. First you take this off. She then carefully peels away the white backing and the tab, leaving just the rainbow striped oval in her hand. Then you take this off of here. You don't have to be able to see to put it on. You just feel on your nail. You're going to feel for the cuticle. I'm not sure if I spelled that right, but it's for the cuticle. Holding the striped oval in her right hand, Jess begins to apply it to the pinky finger of her left hand. You can see I'm just pressing it on. The part of the oval that didn't cover her nail breaks off onto her right thumb. Then you just snap that off. This is what's left over. Holds it up to the camera, then peels the leftover part off her thumb and discards it. Now I've got it on my nail. And if it gets on your skin, that's okay. It's not a big deal if you make mistakes, if it gets wet, you just wait till it dries. You can file it, that's fine. And then what you wanna do is use another nail to push it down. Jess uses her right thumbnail to firmly press against the left pinky nail, thoroughly covering the edges. She removes some of the oval sticker that was attached to her cuticle.
Jess shows a thin rainbow striped nail file to the camera, then begins filing the pinky nail where she attached the Color Street Polish sticker. I have a file here, and you're going to file down. You're not going to file to the side, or you're not going to file up. The reason you don't want to do that is because you can then chip your nails or they can become sharp. And that's difficult if you are have an interpreter that's trying to interpret for you or you're signing and you accidentally scratch your face, you don't want that to happen. It's better to file your nails down. Jess shows her finished nail to the camera. It's easy and it looks beautiful. It looks really nice. A photo of Jess's completely polished left hand is shown. Each nail has a unique sparkly design applied to it. Color Guard Flags by Lily. A woman stands on the grass outside of a tall building. She wears a mask and a long sleeve maroon shirt. It is holding a silver metal pole with a large white flag attached. A strong breeze causes the flag to flutter. Lily spins the flag in front of her and passes it behind her body. She returns the flag to the original position and then completes two large circles over her head and then spins the flag in a circle in front of her body. Lily spins in a circle, holding the flag horizontally over her head, and then spins the flag again in front of her body. Facing away from the camera, Lily spins the flag again and turns around. She spins the flag twice in front of her body and reverses direction, beginning to spin the flag faster. She turns her body and holds the flag out over her head. She spins around, continuing to spin her flag. She brings the flag over her head and turns to face the camera. Lily draws a Z shape in front of her body with the flag. She spins it and tosses it over her head. She turns, spinning the flag, and then passes it below her left leg. She continues to turn her body and spin the flag. Lily draws a W with the flag and skips once as she continues to spin. Lily spins a circle, crouches down, holding the flag perpendicular to her body. Lily stands back up, spinning her flag in circles. She completes a toss and holds it parallel to the, her body. Next, her back is turned to the camera, spinning the flag, and she tosses it over her head. She then turns back to the camera and makes a loop over her right shoulder with the flag. Lily passes the flag under her left leg, turns her body in a circle, continuing to spin the flag. She continues spinning the flag in front of her body, pauses for a moment, and then continues to turn her body in a circle. Lily spins the flag in front of her, then passes it above her body. She spins the flag horizontally over her head, dips the flag to the side of her body. She brings the flag down, spinning it in a circle, and skips to the left. She waves the flag back and forth above her head. She turns in a circle, spinning the flag over her head, then grabs the flag so she holds her pose for the camera. Composing Music by Levi Two video monitors are pictured. The left computer monitor has a bright pink screen with a white V-shaped logo and the words IV Beats at the bottom. The right monitor contains a gray table of words, rows, and sound waves. So I got my setup. This is my monitor. This is my 32-inch TV monitor. This is my computer. It's a Dell computer. A small black box with knobs, switches, and cables is shown. This is a Skylight Focusrite audio interface. This is a KeyStation 49. It's 49 keys. It's a MIDI keyboard. Yeah, this is my Audio Technica M50X's headphones. Got my standard keyboard. Got my custom mouse pad, Ivy Beats. 
And then I got my mouse, Logitech. So I got my mic and my mic stand. My mic is a model Rode NT1A. Then, yeah, then I use a software called FL Studio. My name is Levi Welsh, and I'm a music producer that goes by Ivy Beats, and I'm from Minnesota. So this is my process of making a beat. So first, what you want to do is just choose an option, like would you want to do piano or something, or like a flute or something, but I chose piano. So now what you do is you can click in the notes. Or you can, uh, I have a MIDI keyboard, so I can play it. But uh, that's basically how you create the sound and put it on the, and create a pattern. So I finished creating the pattern that I wanted to do. I just clicked in all the notes individually and it sounds like this. The camera focuses on the computer monitor with white lines spanning across columns of the gray background. The lines represent notes of the musical composition. The camera focuses on the bottom of the screen where virtual representations of mixer sliders and buttons are found. Okay, so this is the mixer track where I can basically mix everything, choose the levels I want to and what I don't want to, and yeah. So next I added an orchestra type sound and this is what it sounds like. So I added a 808, a bass sound to it, and this is what it sounds like. Next I added a hi-hat pattern, so this is what it sounds like. So next I added a kick, just to give it more bounce to it. And finally I added a clap, so this one sounds like all together. A young man with black hair and glasses addresses the camera. A gold skateboard base hangs on the wall behind him. Alright, so I'll play the beat in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Flossing by Zachary. Zachary wears glasses and a blue t-shirt with a cartoon character. The lights in the room change color as he talks. Zachary moves his body side to side and swings his arms in front of and behind his body in a rhythmic pattern. Zachary stops his dance then grabs a piece of dental floss from his bed and begins cleaning his teeth with the floss. The lights continue to flash colors. Self-Portrait by Emmy Sheets of paper are seen on a brown desk. A hand holds a yellow pencil. Emmy draws a face, neck, mouth, nose, and eyes. 
A sweep of hair is added above the face. The hair continues below the shoulder. Emmy adds shading to her drawing. She adds shoulders, arms, and a waist. Details of a shirt are added and Emmy continues to refine her lines. Shading is added to the shirt. The final portrait is revealed. A young woman with long dark hair wears a cardigan and a shirt that reads love. Emmy Page is signed at the bottom right corner surrounded by a heart. A photo of Emmy is shown, revealing the accuracy of the drawing to the subject. Bowling a Strike by Austin A young man steps up to a lane in a bowling alley. Monitors above him read the score of the game, while an onlooker sits in a chair. Austin gets ready, swings his right arm down, and releases the ball. He turns away and walks back to view the monitors, which show that three pins are left standing. Austin picks up his ball from the nearby chute and approaches the lane again. Austin repeats his motion of walking towards the lane while swinging his arm down and back to release the ball. After not knocking down the remaining pins, Austin expresses disappointment. As the video resets, we again see Austin retrieving his ball from the nearby chute and approaching the lane. He squares himself up to the lane before repeating his motion of walking towards the lane, swinging his right arm and releasing the ball. Austin celebrates his successful strike. My Journey to Confidence by Hannah Photo of Hannah, a girl with light brown hair and a blue jacket smiling at the camera. Trees in an open field lead to the sky behind her. My Journey to Confidence Hannah Donnelly Hannah sits in her wheelchair next to the cartoon character Goofy. I was very shy. I wanted to sit in my wheelchair. Hannah sits in her wheelchair and covers her eyes. A blonde woman with a pink shirt kneels next to her and smiles. I had a hard time looking at people. Hannah poses in front of images of Santa's reindeer while covering her eyes. In a second photo, Hannah looks away while posing next to Santa and another adult. Okay, I am still shy with Santa Claus. Hannah crouches next to her brown and white dog to give her pets. In a second photo, Kira the dog snuggles up to Hannah's side as they both watch television. I always feel confident with my dog. This is my boxer, Kira. In a store, Hannah pushes a shopping cart next to her friend. They both wear red boas around their necks. Hannah's friend reaches her hand out to Hannah's shoulder. I had one friend I felt confident with. She is an angel now. Wearing a bright yellow shirt, Hannah smiles at the camera as she stands between two women. In a second photo, Hannah stands and laughs between two women in an outdoor setting. She wears a blue cardigan and a pretty flowery dress. In high school, I switched to the Kansas School for the Deaf. Everyone was deaf like me. Two photos depict Hannah as she smiles and laughs with her friends. She is ice skating in her wheelchair. In a third photo, Hannah and her friends smile and pose for the camera, wearing different colored tie-dyed shirts. I learned a lot of sign language. We did a lot of activities 
and they became my deaf family. A photo from above Hannah shows her ascending a spiral staircase with friends. A second photo shows the spiral staircase from afar, demonstrating the size of the staircase. They encouraged me every step of the way to see my life bigger. Hannah smiles at the camera in front of a Capitol building. In a second photo, Hannah stands in a doorway, wearing athletic clothing and holding her white cane. I became more confident and I could look at people. But then my life changed again at the Helen Keller National Center. Hannah stands and signs with a man in the hallway. Another woman smiles and looks on. In a second photo, Hannah pushes a Target shopping cart as a man talks to her. Other onlookers smile at Hannah in the background. I completed the DBIE program with Michael Richards. I received my first blind cane. In two photos, Hannah demonstrates her white cane travel skills. In one photo, she travels down a hallway, and in a second, she moves past railings and other people. In a third photo, Hannah and her mother smile and pose with Robert Tarango. I walked more confidently with my cane. I met a movie star, Robert Tarango, from Feeling Through. In two photos, Hannah is presented a check by a woman wearing a gray shirt. Hannah accepts the check while holding her cane. With sign language and my blind cane, I came home more confident in the community. Hannah stands next to a police officer who hands her a bag labeled Chico's. In a second photo, a teacher offers Hannah a fist bump while she shows off her outdoor cane travel skills. Out in the community with a policeman and teacher. Hannah accepts a fist bump from a teammate wearing a visor. In a second photo, Hannah smiles and offers a fist bump to another person. Playing baseball with my team. Hannah offers a fist bump to a cashier at a store as she pushes her cart. In a second photo, Hannah bumps fists with a worker at the car wash. or at my favorite grocery store, or at the car wash. Hannah pushes a car wash cart in front of a white SUV. In a second photo, Hannah stands next to the cart and smiles at the camera while her mother looks off into the distance. I like to be out in the community. If you see me, Give me a fist bump. Scrolling on the screen, the words talents with each person's name and talent next to it. Tyler, driving a tractor. Jess, color street nails. Lily, color guard. Levi, composing music. Zach, flossing. Emmy, self-portrait. Austin, bowling a strike. Hannah, confidence journey. The end.
All right, we good to go, Jen? Yes, I am just going to um, share really quick because we had a few people that accidentally went to the wrong Zoom meeting. Um, so I just wanted to share right now, RJ is going to um, kind of lead us in a question and answer time. Um, and so we will invite each of you on screen um, in the order that you appeared in the video to just answer some questions um, and share a little bit more about your talent. Um, for those of you who are watching, if you would like to ask a question, we would just invite you to raise your hand in, um, your, in the Zoom where you will press the raise the hand button um, either at the bottom of your screen or you can use um, Alt Y as a shortcut key on a PC computer or you can use Option Y on a Mac. Um, once we see that your hand is raised, we will invite you onto the screen so that you can ask um, the other um, talent performer your questions. So I'm going to turn it on over to RJ so that we can get started. Okay. Excellent video. Great job by everybody. And uh, great job by Jen in editing the video. All right. So in just a second, I'm going to start calling on you one at a time, those of you that appeared in the video. As Jen mentioned, you'll go in the order in which you appeared. So Tyler will be up first. And what I will do is I will let you know when you're on deck, meaning you're going to be next after the current person. So that way nobody is caught off guard. So Tyler's going to go first and Jess will be on deck. What I'd like each of you to do before we open things up for questions is to just introduce yourself. Just tell us where you're from, if you're in school, what grade you're in, maybe any other interesting things that you'd like us to know about you. If you wanna say a few words about the video that you shot, maybe uh, kind of, was it easy or hard for you to do it? Was it easy or hard for you to think of something to do? Were you gonna do something else, but then you decided to do what you ended up doing? Anything like that. And then we'll go ahead and have some questions for you. So, if we're ready, Tyler, the floor is yours. Tyler, you should be able to um, unmute yourself and turn on your video. Okay, is this okay? Yep, gotcha. Okay, hi. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Tyler Uranic. Uh, I'm with the, uh, obviously, with MTI here, uh, one of the mentors, that, and I've really enjoyed working with all of you. Um, so my uh, talent, as you remember, it was uh, with, the, uh, with driving tractors. And, and uh, I have to say that when I, when I, uh, when I m made this video, this is something that I do for a hobby. And when I, I'm a licensed massage therapist and own my own business, um, you know, so that's kind of what I do. I don't, I wanted to be a mechanic at one time and, uh, I just decided, well, I kind of have more fun working on these antique tractors versus all these other ones with all the electronics and everything else on them. Well, and, uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so I went ahead and, uh, before I, I had somebody else to uh, record that video, it wouldn't quit raining outside. And I told everybody who, or my person who was going to help me, which ended up being my mother, she came out to the place and, and helped me. But I, I told him, I said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do otherwise if I uh, 
don't have the if I if it's raining outside, you know, because I I'm one of those guys that that friends I, I when I'm not on tractor rides and not really using my tractor, I go out and I got a special kind of wax uh, that I put on the tractor, you know, I, I polish it up and make it really nice and shiny and, and, uh, Oh, it's just, it's my pride and joy. It's the only, uh, 770 diesel. A lot of times in the Oliver line that is on a lot of the tractor rides around here. And so I, uh, I, I really do, I really do enjoy it. And, and uh, I hope that everybody enjoyed being able to hear the, the tractor running and things like that. So, uh, I'm open to any questions that anybody might have. And if you uh, decide after the, the meeting or the show here that you have a question, you didn't get a chance to ask it, you feel free to send me an email or whatever. And I'd love to talk to you about it because antique tractors, th this is my thing, friends. So thank you. Questions for Tyler. And I'll let Jen call on anybody who has their hand raised or anybody who's typing anything into the chat feature. And this is Jen. There are no hands raised or questions yet. Oh, I see one question um, in the chat. So Teresa asked, Tyler, why do you love the Oliver so much? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, when I first started getting into antique tractors, and I, and I want to tell the whole story so you get the full picture. When uh, I, my dad kind of got me into this when I was in eighth grade, and you know now I'm almost 25, and uh, and he started me in the John Deere line and and uh, whatever, and those were okay, but their their road speeds just weren't very fast and the only tractor that i had around here was a john deere a that uh was you know a 1936 model and back in 36 rubber tires weren't a thing yet and so uh you know they didn't make them to go real fast down the road well if you know me any any uh way shape or form you know that i love to go fast and uh, and so, but uh, I wanted, I always wanted to go on these, these long 50 mile rides and people uh, have always talked to me about how much fun they were. Well, one day, uh, grandpa, my grandpa, uh, Bill Uronic said, uh, Tyler, I got something out here that I want to show you. That's a lot like my, uh, the tractor I grew up driving when I was a kid. I said, okay, well, we'll walk out to the shed. We'll look at it. Well, there he had a, a Oliver 88, which would be a 1948 model. And my grandpa, uh, Bill, can still tell you this, the whole story, and I won't share it tonight because we don't have time. But basically, he remembers as an 11-year-old kid going to the Oliver dealership with my great-grandpa and buying an 88 just like it and uh and back in those times the the 88s were about three thousand dollars well that particular 88 i got up on that tractor and started driving around the yard and he was sitting on the fender next to me and my goodness i just loved it the motor was so soft and and just purred like a kitten well long story short for my graduation that year, Grandpa said, well, Tyler, I think you need to take this pile of bolts home with you. So uh, that's kind of how I got into the Oliver line. But as far as the 770, that came uh, as an emergency, if you want to call it that. Uh, my fundraising ride that I do for eyesight research every year was uh, coming up. Well, on the ride in June that I go on at 88, Oh man, I'll tell you every year I had to put money into it. And this year I just, or, um, in 2018 or 19, rather when I, uh, took it on the last ride that I was on, 
I just had put $225 in parts in it, and I got right down the middle of the highway, about eight miles out of Persia, Iowa, and sure enough, that thing quit in the middle of the highway. I brought it home and found out that I blew the head gasket. It was going to probably cost about three grand to get it fixed. And I said, well, okay, I got an, I know a guy out up in northern Iowa, about north of Cedar Falls, for those of you that kind of know where that is. And, uh, and he said, or he uh, told my father, yeah, you know, I got a restored 770 diesel out in my shed. Uh, if Tyler would be interested in it, I'd love to talk to him about it. He's, so I talked to him about it, and I said, well, I hope it's a good one. He said, well, I'll make sure it's a good one, Tyler. I'm going to take it to an antique tractor pole for you. He sent me a video, and I said, well, Dad sent in a semi up to that way to get some other machinery for him. I said, you just throw it on the truck, and I'll send you a check. So that's what I did. And I, I just I love the tractor. I've loved it since the day it got here, and it was here two weeks before my ride. And at that point in time, I was panicking because – Tyler always leads that tractor ride, and you better have a tractor here to do it with. And uh, I barely made it, but and I always thought I would sell it after that, and I just loved it so much I hung on to it. And this is this is RJ. How fast can you go in in uh, one of those tractors? Well, it depends on how many. It depends on what brand and and the gear ratio. With mine, you can do. I've gotten it to do about fourteen. But there's a there's a real steep hill to the left to the west of our house here. I just love taking the tractor. I clocked it in on my iPhone, going down the hill, wide open, at 18 mile an hour. <laughs> and, I know, <laughs> and I know that. And and the thing is, is I could put some bigger tires on it, and I think I could get I think I could get 17 or 18 out of it to begin with, but a lot of the newer Olivers, they'll go, you know, 20, 21. If you've got any internationals, they'll, uh, my dad's got a 966 international out here that would go, oh, it'll go a good, uh, oh, easy 25. Wow. Hey, if, if there are any potholes in Iowa, like there are here in Indiana, be very careful out there. Okay. I don't want to hear any stories about any flat tires out there on the road. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I can tell you a few good stories about uh, uh, visually impaired people trying to load a tractor on a trailer. That doesn't work very well either. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? None that I see right now, but Teresa did comment. Um, love it, Tyler. And the story of your grandpa is awesome. Oh, thank you. i tell you what, Teresa, you know, it's really sad for me this, uh, this year, my, my grandpa's had some health issues now, and he's dealing with about stage four liver and kidney failure. And, uh, and on my ride every year, he's always been uh, number three in line. It was always me leading. And there was another gentleman who helped me plan the ride every year. And then it was him. And this year it's going to be really, really hard looking back or, you know, having somebody tell me who's number three, because I know it probably won't be grandpa. So thank you. And you said that the funds that you raise during the fundraiser go to eyesight research, correct? Yes, they go to the uh, the University of Iowa um, retinal research uh, fund because I, I have bilateral detached retinas and boy, the research they're doing over there is incredible. And if anybody too wants to have a brochure uh, for the ride, let me know. I'll send you one electronically. All right. Anything else? Not that I see at this time. Okay. Well, Tyler, um, thanks for doing this outstanding job with the entire presentation and um, best of luck to you. Hey, thank you, RJ. I really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to share it with you. And if you guys ever get down here to Iowa and want to come look at an Oliver in Southwest Iowa. I've probably got one of the only ones. So 
let me know. <laughs> so you're in Southwest Iowa, like by where Nebraska and South Dakota meet? I uh, know by where uh, Nebraska and Iowa meet on the uh, Missouri River. So it'd be like Council Bluffs. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Right, right across from Omaha. Yes. Mm-hmm. By, uh, I'm about five miles from uh, Iowa School for the Deaf. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right on I-80. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. So on deck now, we have Emmy. But before that, we go to someone who did something that I never would have believed possible. And that is making flossing seem like fun. Zach, talk to us. This is Jen. Zach, you should be able to unmute yourself and turn on your video. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. okay. Your name, your age, school, no school, whatever. Where you live? My name is Zach. I'm 18. Um, I graduated high school last year, so I'm in TC Transition Center in the Grange. And I live in Lombard, Illinois. All right, any questions for Zach? Would anybody like any tips on okay. how to have fun flossing teeth? Um, this is Jen. Zach, one of questions was what's more fun um doing the floss dance or flossing your teeth floss dance (laughs) i thought you might say that and then i see um tyler is raising his hand so i'm actually going to bring him on screen so that he can ask you his question And while we wait for Tyler, um, Ashley did share in the chat that she hates flossing. (laughs) I don't know if you said hate. (laughs) And Tyler, you should be able to um, unmute and ask your question to Zach. Okay, um, Zach, I'm just curious. You, uh, I, I do not floss whatsoever, and and when I go to the uh, the dentist, I always pay for it because it hurts so bad. What's your trick to not making it hurt so bad? I usually floss my teeth very slow. Okay, cool. Zach, this is RJ. This is just between you and me, okay? Nobody else is listening. How often do you floss? How often do you flush your teeth? Me? Never. One time every month. Okay. All right. Well, let me just tell you, you're not alone. I don't floss nearly as much as I should either. And I go to the dentist every six months and I can pretty much count on hearing about it every time I visit the dentist, so.
I see Emmy has her hand up, so I'm going to let her on and, so that she can ask you her question directly. And in the meantime, um, Abby shared that she does not like flossing either. And Tanya asked, how did you learn how to floss? So how to do the dance, the floss? Uh, I started doing it since back like 2018 or 19, I don't remember. Did you watch it on TV? Did you watch it? Where did you learn to do the dance? Did you learn it at school? No. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> All right, Emmy, I see that you are on screen. If you want to go ahead and ask Zach your question, that would be great. Am I off? No. Okay. Can you ever floss in public? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the dance or the teeth? Both. <laughs> Oh, Jack. <laughs> We're getting a no here. <laughs> well, let me tell you this, Zach, because uh, I'm, I'm sure you know how mean and nasty those dentists and especially the dental assistants are well, when it comes to flossing. What you do to try to take some of the sting away from them is when they ask you if you floss every day, you just say something like, oh, I try to. I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And then they won't be quite as hard on you. Yep. And then, you know, you, you admit that, that you haven't been doing it quite as much as you should, but you promise you'll do it more in the future and then you repeat that every six months when you go to the dentist and um you'll be able to get away with it okay this is jen um jane just commented great advice hilarious <laughs> i do what i can all right. Well, Zach, uh, great presentation there. And let's see if we can up that to two times a month, okay? Got to start somewhere. Okay. Best of luck to you. All right. Emmy is up next. She did the self portrait. Then once we hear from Emmy up after that will be Austin. So Austin is on deck. Emmy, the floor is yours. Oh, I can't, can I talk? Okay, okay. Better. Yeah, thank you. Am I off? Yes. Am I off? Yeah. Oh, you're talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where do you live? You tell me. Answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I live in Kokomo, Indiana. What grade are you in? Yeah, I'm not in a grade anymore. I'm in high school. Nine. And. Are you going to do something? Oh, yes, I was. I I was going to sing. Hi. But you you're talking to oh. everybody on camera. Oh, dang it. I was going to sing, but I decided I couldn't find a song. Then I was going to draw and then do a voiceover of me singing. But I couldn't think of a song. Then I can be like, ah, whatever. I'll just draw and then put background music. 
Cause I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, and then I had to decide what to draw. The colors are running out, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll just draw a picture of myself. That's what? That's what I decided to draw. Yep. What? And where are you from, Emmy? Pokemon, Indiana. Any questions? Emmy, I, there's a comment from Abby that your drawing was awesome, and Hannah said the same thing. Oh, thanks. Um, Jane said, Emmy, great self-portrait. What else do you like to draw? Um, I usually like to draw characters from my favorite radio drama. I know super old, but I still like them. So don't trust me. I'm just kidding. I do draw characters from my favorite, favorite radio drama. I think and awesome. If you haven't heard it, go over there right now. Because it's awesome. And I also like to draw dessert, too. And Ashley asked, what's your favorite thing to draw? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if I have a favorite. A lot of the time, I go through art block, drawers block. I don't know. But sometimes I just can't think of anything to draw. And then Teresa asks, um, first she said your drawing was wonderful. And then she asked, do you like to draw other people? Yes, yeah, sometimes I do. And that's all the questions that I see right now. Cool. Okay, this is RJ. Let me ask you this. During those times when you're not really sure beforehand what you want to draw and you just start drawing, do you find that sometimes those are when you come up with your best work? Oh, um, um, sometimes. <laughs> Like pre-sex sometimes, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, great job. Sometimes it's so slow. And there are actually a couple more questions. That oh, okay. Me. Um, Emmy, Tanya asks, what do you like to draw with? Do you have special pencil pencils or other things that you use? Um, not really. I usually use mechanical pencils. Every once in a while, rarely, I use colors. So I'm not really a color person. But I do use, sometimes I use pen. I used to use black marker when I was really little. But then I moved on to mechanical pencils because you don't have to struggle into a pencil sharpener. Oh, I hate pencil sharpener. The, the really kind, the hand kind, they make your hands all black with the, like the graphite, graphite. I hate pencil sharpener. I hate them. I just use mechanical. I just make them all by them. Speaking of. <laughs> That's a good tip. Um, and it Ashley asks, um, does it make you feel better when you draw? Oh, yeah. Cause like, I'm just in my own world. I just put on something, either music, an audio book, and then I just drag my paper. And I, just, I like my hermit. I love my hermit cell. <laughs> A pack of paper, my iPad, we're good. Oh, and snacks. Ah, that's my happy place. <laughs> <laughs>
And that is all the questions that I see right now. Okay. Yes. Well, Emmy, as you can tell, you just made yourself a lot of new fans. Yay, I love killing. So great work and uh, good luck to you in the future. I, I think uh, I think we can all expect to see some of your work in uh, one of the big museums of art in Chicago or New York or maybe London. How's that sound? Great. I also have an art account on Instagram. Get out your phone. All art underscore 2020, all lowercase. Just in case you want to follow me on Insta. I'll be checking out the chicken. <laughs> it really cut me out. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, I, I think you're going to be having some uh, requests for some new followers Yay! in the next uh, couple of days. So get ready for that, okay? Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Great job and uh, good luck to you. All right. Two presenters left. First, Austin, and then Hannah. So Austin, I would have to say I have bowled a strike in the past, but that was with bumpers. So... I'll be listening to see if you've got any good tips for me and the rest of us. So here is the guy who bowled a strike, embarrassing all of us who have made fools of ourselves on the bowling alley. Austin, talk to us. Austin, this is Jen. Can you um, change your um, video a little bit down? We're having a hard time seeing your signing. Thank you. Yeah, I started. Um, and it was actually Yeah, I had gotten a second second place once um, in the whole state. Yeah. So yeah, that was about it. Second in the state. What was that like? Oh, it made me happy. What's the highest score you've ever bowled in one game? Oh, 200? Close to 200. 165. Oh, nice. Any questions? Tyler asked, how do you know where the pins are? Can 
can you see where all the, the 10 pins are? Or do you look down where the arrow is? <coughs> when you're bowling, when you're, can you see all the way down? Or do you look down so you know where to put the ball? I can work thing up here. I can work up here, now work down. I try to look up towards the pins, look straight at them. Another question is, how long have you been bowling? Four years. Well, that's good. Four years. And Abby asks, and so does Ashley, um, how often do you go bowling? Right now? Still right now, every Wednesday. I go every Wednesday. Night. Every Wednesday night I go. And there's another question. Who do you like to go bowling with? Who do you go bowling with? Who? That's my family. Usually my family. And friends too. Friends sometimes too. And then Tyler asked, have you ever heard the bowling song? And if you have, do you like it? No. No. Mm -mm. Never heard of I've never heard of a bowling song. Why do you know a bowling song? Never heard. What's the question? Have you ever heard of the bowling song? No. Unless it's what you sing after you win the fifth frame. Um, and then Tanya asks, do you have your own special bowling ball that you bring to use at the bowling alley? I have my special ball. Yes, I do have my own special ball. I have my own ball. How heavy is that ball? 11 or 12 pounds? 11 or 12 pounds. 11 or 12 pounds. And that's this, all the questions I'm seeing. This is RJ. Um, I'm sure you had to deal with a 710 split before. Have you ever found a way to get a spare on a 710 split? No, uh-uh. <laughs> okay. All right, well, Austin, best of luck to you. Thanks for uh, joining us this evening. Keep up the great work on the bowling alley, okay? Oh, yes, for sure. All right, last but not least, Hannah, who, as you'll recall, did a presentation on how she has become a much more confident person. So we'll hear from Hannah now, and then uh, we'll get ready to wrap this thing up. Go ahead, Hannah. That's just okay. Yeah. Okay. You're Can everybody hear us? Yep. So I don't see. Okay. There we go. Okay. So. Um, Hannah watched all the videos and then said, peace out, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. <laughs> so we've watched the end. We've got her dog here and she really enjoyed it. She is from Kansas. We are in Kansas City. She goes to the Kansas School for the Deaf. And um, she has really gone from this change of being a very shy child to being much more open to the point where we have to talk about stranger danger and not give five to everybody in the store, <laughs> but um, leave it to just the people, the people working there. So we fist bump, obviously, because of COVID and um, otherwise it, it's usually given everybody five, but fist bump is what we've gone to. And 
So, this so, has been a great experience. Everybody has great videos. That yeah, it was a really cool story. I I enjoyed hearing it. Um, I am curious about this. Was there one moment in particular when you realized that she had become much more confident than she once was? The final piece was getting her white cane in January of 2020. And I suddenly learned very quickly that what she always thought were th bumps in the sidewalk or whatever, and she was scared to walk, she went from doing this walking to having the cane and walking so confident mm -hmm. that I'm trying to keep up with her. I mean, she's just a really different person with confidence and having sign language and knowing there's people like her that are deaf and blind and deaf blind. And, and so she watched people at Helen Keller walk with their canes. And I think that was just so instrumental for her accepting the cane so readily and it helped her. Any questions? Um, so there were a couple of comments. Um, Jane said, great slideshow. Very cool to see her open up and go. Um, Ashley said she's mm -hmm. the most confident person I have seen in a long time. And then Tyler was wondering, mm -hmm. has she ever thought about a guide dog? Um, we would love to have for her to have a guide dog, but she's not um, at the she's not able to take care of the dog in the way that she should. So that she's not eligible for a guide dog, but a support dog she is. Is it easier for her to make friends now? Um, what do you think? I think it's easier for her to connect with people, but she doesn't have a lot of friends. Except for adult friends. So I, I was going to ask Hannah this, but I'll go ahead and ask you instead. Um, if you ran into let's say the parent of somebody who was, you know, struggling with confidence like Hannah was at one time, what advice would you give to the parent of that child? I think the main thing is keep working to find what it is if they can't talk on their own, what it is that they're trying to tell you. And all along, Hannah was trying to tell us that she was scared to walk because she didn't know where she was walking to. She couldn't see enough because she was diagnosed late as being legally blind at 15. And to have the cane was just life altering to see her now be able to walk confidently. And so you just have to keep working to find what they're trying to tell you. That's really good. Really cool story. Anything else? Any other questions? One other question just came in. Um, Emmy is wondering how old is Hannah and how old was she when she went to the program at the Helen Keller Institute? She is 19 years old right now. She went um, last year, January, 2020. So she was 18 at that point or almost 18, 18? 17. 17, yeah, yeah, she would have been 17. So she wasn't quite 18 yet. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a great experience where we found work experiences where she feels confident and we keep practicing all summer with those work experiences. So to go off that, Tyler actually just asked, what does she do for a living? She, her, <laughs> she loves to match and organize. And so we go to the store and we put things back in place where they're supposed to go. But it's really interesting how that is transferred at home. And she has her um, unique organizational skills at home, which are different from mine. And I have to sometimes search for what she's decided something should go somewhere. And this is Jen. That's all of the questions and comments that I see at this time. Well, hey, listen, that was a really neat story. I'm, I'm glad that Hannah was willing to share that with us. I know that, that sometimes things like that can be, you know, a little bit personal and, and, you know, some people may not 
like to open up about things like that, but but she did, and I think we're all uh, glad that she did. So best of luck to her and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Jen, before we say good night? Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you who sent in videos. We really appreciate it. Um, and I wanted to say thank you um, to both Mandy and Lisa for their help with this Talent Show project and to all of the DeafBlind State Projects, Helen Keller National Center, and the National Center on DeafBlindness just for their support um, and all of their help in promoting this. So thank you very much. And thank you, RJ, for being the best MC we could ask for. Oh, that's very nice of you. I appreciate that. I enjoyed doing this. So thanks to everybody who contributed, especially thanks to the nine students and mentors who took part in the talent show. With that, I think we're done. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, enjoy the rest of your summer, everybody. Bye, everyone.